The education scenario in India is changing very rapidly. It's changing by leaps and bounds every day. And one reason for that, of course, is the advent of technology, advent of what we have now come to know in common parlance as edutech, a word that is just so mainstream now, which is basically combining technology with education, hoping to get it to a vast number of people. Of course, remember getting quality education to a country like India, to every corner of a country like India. Access of that quality education, of course, still remains a big challenge. Can edutech be the game changer? That's what we're going to be looking at today. Let me introduce my panel to you. Uh, I'm joined by Pratyush Kukreja. He's a consultant at Unitis uh, Seed Fund, which is an investment fund which provides seed funding to social enterprise. Uh, Saurabh Arya, founder and CEO of Delhi-based uh, Smart Education, working towards making education personalized uh, for students. There's uh, Mukul Rastaki, co-founder at XPREP, which is uh, sort of solving the tut in involved in the tutor parent network involving tutors. Also Priyadi Persina joining us from Bangalore. He's a founder at Gyan Lab, which is an online adaptive personalized learning platform. Thanks all so much for taking our time to speak to us once again, wondering why the women are on this panel and why edtech doesn't seem to be a space that has too many women, though of course that is not quite representative of the panel here. But let's get started right away. Uh, Mukul, let me start by asking you, yep. you know, we are looking at uh, a country where after all these years getting, like I said in the, in the beginning, access to quality education to everyone is still a big challenge. Yep. With the advent of technology, and now given how digital India might just sort of get all of us on the same digital platform, do you believe that edtech has a key role to play? Yes, edtech does have a key role to play. Uh, one basic point that uh, we realized very early in our journey is that we the advent of technology should not drive us to just be an online play hmm. into an education thing. So education in India, as far as the parents' mindset and the students' mindset go, we have to combine the best of the both worlds, the mm -hmm. online and the offline world, mm -hmm. where maybe you can supplement the offline education in an online way or the other way. So that is uh, the major learning that uh, we put on. Um, so yeah, that, that's the major that's, role. And that's an important point because very often, Saurabh, we need to sort of keep underscoring the point that edtech is not here to replace conventional classrooms. It's not going to take away from brick and mortar as we know it. Brick and mortar is going to stay this is going to supplement it, this is going to be an add-on, this is going to perhaps bring more onto the table yeah. as far as the student is concerned. See, fundamentally for students, teachers, parents, everyone wants better learning. Sure. Okay? For maybe 20 years ago, better learning, the only source for that was physical classroom one-to-one -one teaching. Mm. Okay, But as digital has sort of reached almost everybody in the country, mm. there's obviously that much uh, uh, resources that are available for us mm. to improve the learning process. Mm. And that's where digital comes in. Mm. There are places where teachers and digital go sort of hand in hand in mm. urban centers, mm. up market centers. As you go in tier two, tier three, mm. teachers, as all of us know, either are not there or their quality is not up to the mark. Mm. So digital can hopefully play a much more dom a prominent role over there. Mm. Priyadeep Sinha, comment on that because very often uh, one has come across situations where people are still not sure what the advantage will be of getting into digital tech. Is, is, is there still a perception problem is what I'm trying to get at. We've seen the big successes of say a Coursera, a Khan Academy, how they've done what they've done. So these are names that are now very mainstream. Everyone's sort of very familiar with them. So in, in a sense, that benefits a sector like EdTech. But what do you believe are the key challenges? Is perception still an issue or is that a hurdle that you've overcome? Oh, no, it is, uh, Natasha, you know, to be very, very frank, uh, right now, uh, the problem is that, you know, in brick and mortar, people are getting to see things. I mean, if you go to a school, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you know, parents are able to see, okay, these are the teachers, this mm -hmm. is the principal, this is the school's ground. Everything is visible there. Mm -hmm. uh, moment it comes to digital and ed tech, right, I mean, it's just that, uh, you know, for people to believe that, oh, if I do a degree from Coursera, does it mean that, you know, mm -hmm. I get a college degree? Mm -hmm. So th that kind of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, know-how, uh, there is a lack of it. Sorry, would you agree? I do. Mm. Uh, I think uh, a knowledgeable soul mm. s I was interacting with uh, gave it a good twist. So he said that the problem with education and ed tech is that it's difficult for us to tangibilize things. Right. Okay. In a school, right. like he said, exactly. everything is in front of you. It's all there. Yeah. E-commerce, you get something at your home and you pay for it. Right. Improving learning, making it better, mm. somehow it's difficult to tangibilize. Mm. And the moment we are able to do it, it's mm. easier for parents and teachers to accept it. Mm. And that's, I think that's the way forward. Tangibilization right. is the key. Right. Pratish, you know, uh, you're involved with sort of these uh, early stage startups right. providing uh, seed funding to them. Education, of course, being one of the biggest areas that we need to focus on given mm. the young country, given that it's hungry right. for knowledge. Despite all these challenges, do you sort of see edtech as one sector that we're seeing more and more ideas, seeing more and more possibilities of disruption mm -hmm. as it was? 
Yeah, so uh, we see some amazing products coming out which are enabling learning, mm. which are solving some uh, specific problems, right? So uh, continuous learning, once you're out of school, once you're out of your high school or uh, post-grad or undergrad, mm. uh, people still want to learn and mm. adapt and learn new technologies, new frameworks, all of these things. So mm. uh, all the platform that you just mentioned, Coursera, mm. uh, all these MOOCs mm. as we call them, mm. right? Mm. They've been able to solve that problem. But uh, enabling fundamental learning, right, like mm. mental mathematics or uh, science, mm. so that is still something which, uh, especially in India, we are yet to uh, see anything which can potentially disrupt. Mm. Uh, but that this not is the, the problem of the startups or the products that they have, but it's also about market access or distribution, right? right? right. So Priyadeep, coming at this point, do, w what really for you, besides the problem of perception, do you believe is the biggest challenge that you have personally faced? Uh, I mean, you know, the, the biggest problem for us as a startup has been uh, raising money. Uh, because mm. you know uh, we, we started off with with hardware uh, as, as our mainstay of the business and uh, you know when we tried raising money for that uh, you, people would be like hardware education I don't think this is going to work out uh, so you know starting from there and and finally have moving on to you know uh, tech enabled education I think uh, uh, realizing that that you know uh, uh, that, that there is a, there is a fear uh, in the market about you know uh, that that hardware based uh, uh, you know learning kits or tools are not going to uh, mm. you know, s sustain or survive for a very long time mm. was there so that was a major problem secondly uh, i think you know there's there's also this uh, uh, the, the whole b2b versus b2c dilemma mm. so we were initially targeting uh, schools and and making a sale was like a horrific experience for us uh, so I out see. of the 800 odd schools we cold called we were able to close about only 20 and, uh, and and you know that, why do you that, believe and, that and happened? That is over a period. Why do you believe that happened? I think you know you can't blame anybody, but uh, if you, if you look at from a from a school principal's point of view, uh, he or she is getting about you know 100, 150 odd uh, uh, you know collaterals or or marketing material for different products that that want to sell into their schools, and, and at one point of time they just give up. You know they're like I, I can't decide. Mukul, would you agree that there is a problem of plenty? We are told that edtech is one of those sectors that you know 2016 in India will be the the, the year of of, of the edtech. Mm -hmm. Also sort of bring out the point that now so many people, so many ideas, so many people wanting to try something new, so problem of plenty, who do you go with? That often becomes a challenge exactly. for uh, schools. I'd agree to that, but I'll also make a very, uh, very normal, uh, very uh, solid point that it's a huge, huge, enormous market. And it, it has so many people c looking out for so many solutions that you mm. actually cannot be a one product fit. This is not sure. one of those markets. Mm. And everybody has their own individual needs. Mm. Personalization, according to me, is the key thing when mm. it comes to education. Mm. Now, what uh, I'll agree to uh, Prayer, uh, Prayer's point that uh, the schools, they have a huge uh, decision-making mm. cycle and everything. And uh, the, also the fact that the consumers and the customers are entirely different. Mm. And the, mo the medium is the tutor or teacher. Right. That is one thing that actually led us to exploring the parallel economy of uh, education in, in terms of tuition e uh, economies. Mm. Researches show that uh, almost 90% of the people now mm. take up tuitions. Mm. And uh, that is where we realize that come how any, any, any solution that can come up digitally or uh, just a pure online play, parents still want some kind of teacher or assistant to be teaching their kids. You mean it doesn't have to be like sort of like a physical presence next to me. It can just be somebody supplementing what I'm learning. So what form is not important? Just what? kuch hona chahiye. Uh, what form is important? Mm. So, uh, in, in we and my, my me and my co-founder call it as an emotional acquisition cost. So th this is something that we have uh, like. Uh, uh, formulated just for the education sector because uh, even if the parents are very very happy about the online solution if they can't just tangibly and physically feel that th there is somebody who can cater to the solutions mm. they become a little edgy as a society this is the way that we are you know ingrained to it brick and mortar right. teacher hona chahiye, maybe tutor sitting now we're looking at a different space a generation that's totally tech savvy perhaps mm -hmm. sort of already on google before the teachers began talking in the class and, mm -hmm. and, and all of that but again being so sort of dependent on tech Mm -hmm. I mean, as these are all tech startups, of course, and the crisis of often is that someone sitting in, say, sometimes even tier two, but definitely tier three cannot get that kind of access. You have bandwidth issues, you have this issues, mm -hmm. connectivity problems and all of that. Despite Digital India, right. how do you see all of that changing? And, and th those numbers, that volume is going to be key to mm -hmm. the growth of this sector, isn't it? Right. So, um, you know, what internet has enabled us to do is uh, lower the distribution costs for mm. content mm. or ac acquire more customers, you know, sitting mm. in one place. Mm. 
the same rule applies to education also reaching mm. out to those tier 3 student uh, mm. tier 3 city uh, students mm. uh, but then again uh, infrastructure is an issue we mm. hope digital india solves that but at the same time, um, so technology is using some sort of offline plus online buffers, mm. cache technologies, mm. all of these frameworks to ensure that uh, technology is not a problem while delivering content mm. or engaging with the student. Mm. Uh, but then again, if even sitting in Delhi, uh, you know, these guys uh, uh, are not able to convince Absolutely. that there is a tangibility right. in the delivery of the service, right. Right. I mean, it uh, with, uh, with a poor uh, infrastructure, poor exactly. bandwidth, all of these things, they are all challenges that uh, yes, need uh, to be resolved. That is a problem mm. that uh, you would want to get to the the, the rural most areas. Absolutely. But the bigger problem is have we been able to convert the metros yet? I see. Well, I think there's a huge market which is yet untapped from a mm -hmm. startup perspective, mm -hmm. even in metros. Mm -hmm.